Francis, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm glad you're here. So help me understand this. My, my very first basic question, and feel free to start before this if you'd like to. I don't understand why a dictator would have an election. And then if a dictator had an election, why would he make it in any way an election that he might in, even potentially look like he would lose? I don't understand what's happening here. So um, Venezuela is like, uh, it's, it's not a total dictatorship the way we have, for example, North Korea. Um, you know, there's, there's levels to it. So there's total dictatorship where you have North Korea and China. There's no elections. Um, there's no pretense of elections. Um, but there's a middle tier of countries like Russia and uh, Venezuela that have fake elections because they're basically trying to win a propaganda war with the West. And so part of their fake elections is to undermine our own belief in our election system, right? So they, they host these insane sham elections. Um, Nicolás Maduro, the dictator, was on the ballot 13 times in this election. If you look at the ballot, there's 13 of his own face on it, and then everybody else is face, <laughs> which is only like... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry, I want to make sure you hear that right. Say it again. What, 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 what was on 16 times? His face. So in Venezuela, because a lot of people are not literate, it's just the face of the candidate when you go to the ballot to vote. Um, and his face was on it 13 times. Um, and everybody else's face was on once, maybe twice. And, and the other candidates are all, you know, the Communist Party of Venezuela instead of the Socialist Party. They're fake uh, parties and there was one opposition. Okay, all right, I'm look. I'm looking at this now. This is this is amazing. You're right. It's just it's their faces. Yeah, and he's on the entire top yes. row, and then a little bit of the next row. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so, great. Why? Because he's like, is he like a member of every party yeah, or something? It's so it's his own party, and then it's every a bunch of other fake parties in the country just endorsed him as the candidate. Um, so that's how they do it. So the the whole point of this is. He claims that he won this election fairly, and then he can turn to us and be like, well, are you so sure that you have election integrity, America? And then he, you know, he turns around all the right-wing complaints about what happened in 2020, and he uses that as a propaganda victory. But obviously there's no comparison between um, a system like Venezuela, which is a complete sham, and the possibility that somebody locally might have been cheating in a massive system like America's, where it's so fragmented by state. Um, so that's what it is. It's all propaganda. It's not necessarily that um, they feel that they have to justify being there to their own people. This is about an international audience. Okay. So what happened in the election? Uh, well, it, according to the election authority, which is completely governed by Maduro, he won something like 60 to 48 uh, percent. The opposition claims that they have obtained, um, that their people obtained all the local um, ballot boxes and that they counted and that they won by something like 4 million points. Um, and the opposition did something this time that they hadn't done in the past. In the past, they basically said, the election was a sham, don't participate. And the tactic was get record low turnout to delegitimize Maduro. This time, they tried to get people to vote claiming that, you know, we have to prove at the ballot box that we can win. And so the turnout was a lot higher, and they're saying that they have proof that they won. Um, but, you know, good luck getting the Venezuelan regime to respect that, much less even let you publish the evidence you have. Okay. There's no way he would ever step aside or lose an election. Right? Absolutely not. No, not, not even close. <laughs> and there's no, you know, the, the opposition is not organized enough. First of all, they have no weapons. They have no military. They have no police. So they have no way of forcing Maduro out of there. And number two, it's hijacked by socialists anyway. A bunch of the leadership of the opposition are members of the Socialist International. Um, they're people that are, you know, uh, what do you call it, social democrats. They're not necessarily, there's no real conservatism there. The closest is Maria Corina Machado, who is actually the most popular politician in Venezuela because she's even remotely conservative. And she lent herself to this, let's boost the turnout and try to win legitimately approach, which I would call Guy Fieta. How is she not dead? How, how do they let her live? Um, I think it's, she's just too famous. She's too popular and... Venezuela is kind of a powder ticket because um, Hugo Chavez did, um, one of the first things he did when he was elected was confiscate the guns. So at the very least, they've always had that protection. The regime is protected from its people by confiscating the guns. But at this point, it's been 20, 
five years almost of socialist rot, which means the criminal gangs have basically made guns ubiquitous everywhere. Caracas is one of the murder capitals of the world. So if the people really wanted guns, um, there's a non-zero chance that there could be some alliance with a criminal gang that could strengthen them. So if you take out Maria Corina Machado, if, if you kill her, you're going to have a popular rebellion on your hands. And I think they're very worried that um, the, the opposition, the people who support the opposition, who are mostly decent Venezuelans, who are peaceful and they just want to have a normal life, that those people might be radicalized into violence. Um, and that has not happened yet. But I think if you take out their, their most beloved leader, you're going to have a much higher percentage chance that that's going to happen. Okay. Is uh, the obvious fraud or whatever of this election enough for a sort of popular uprising against him or no? Um, there, there are going to be protests. There already are protests, but this isn't our first rodeo. This is, um, I think it's Maduro's fourth sham presidential election that he fake won, um, in addition to four or five other legislative gubernatorial level elections that he completely um, committed fraud through. So this is, you know, we're on like our eighth fake Venezuelan election at this point. Um, and, and a big, two big things have happened. One, a lot of the really hardline opposition, the people who are, were confronting the tanks in the streets in 2014, 2015, a lot of those people are either in prison or dead. And a lot of those people are in exile. Seven million people have fled Venezuela. Um, so you have a, a very hollowed out populace and you have people that are starving people that don't have running water um it is very difficult to see any sort of organized toppling campaign there the way you you saw in like romania you know 40 years ago mm. uh, i'm sure you saw this in the new york times uh they said if the election decision holds and mr maduro remains in power he will carry chavismo is that right yeah. the country's socialist inspired movement into its third decade in Venezuela. Founded by former President Hugo Chavez, Mr. Maduro's mentor, the movement initially promised to lift millions out of poverty, as communism always does. For a time it did, the New York Times says. For a time it did. But in recent years, the socialist model has given way to brutal capitalism with a small state-connected minority controlling much of the nation's wealth. Brutal capitalism, Francis, is the economic system of Venezuela. <laughs> Well, the New York Times is deranged. The New York Times cannot be trusted. It's a communist. I mean, just read Jacqueline Mag. You'll get a more honest take. Um, and, and remember, the New York Times is the magazine that, uh, or the newspaper that created uh, fake news to get Fidel Castro into power. Fidel Castro was extremely unpopular in Cuba. And Herbert Matthews, a New York Times journalist, wrote a bunch of lying articles saying that he had a massive army and kind of... Uh, deluded um, Fulgencio Batista into fleeing because he thought he was facing a bigger army mm. than he thought he had. And it was because the New York Times reported that he had a bigger army than he had. Um, so the New York Times can't be trusted on this at all. It's obviously not anything remotely co close to capitalism. There's no such thing as a functional small business in Venezuela. There's no such thing as uh, starting your own business. Um, to the extent that people have money, um, it's basically black market dollars that are sent in from abroad. Um, the Bolivar is not a functional currency whatsoever. No one uses it. You know, people, people use the Bolivar to, to weave baskets. That's what they make art. That's what the, the Bolivar is for. Um, so no, this is a communist system. It's not even a socialist system. It's straight up Zimbabwe, you know, communism, North Korea communism. Um, the only difference is that um, they have to have this veneer of quote unquote democracy because they're in, they're in the same propaganda war with the United States that their allies, Russia, China, and Iran are in. So they have to have elections the way that Russia and Iran have fake elections. Um, and they use that against us. 